All right, I always like to start off to asking where you were sort of born and raised so that people around the world can sort of put a, a sort of an identity to where you came from. Well, I'm originally from um, East Coast, Philadelphia. Okay. Um, born and raised in Philadelphia. I live outside, I live right between New York City and Philadelphia now. And I'm pretty much bi-coastal. I go back and forth to LA a lot. But for most of it, I'm in Pennsylvania and raised in Philadelphia. Yeah, so for most of us who are not sort of born or raised in America, um, I think Phil, Will Smith and the Fresh Prince cannot put Philadelphia on the map for us internationally. I'm sure. Yes, I mean, that Philly has been popular for, for a long time, but for international audience, everyone thinks Philadelphia. Oh, Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'm from the same area, West Philly. Oh, West Philly. <laughs> oh, we could all say the Fresh Prince rap and stuff. Yeah, the Fresh Prince. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, knowing that you're part of um, a legendary family of, of singers, um, being the youngest, um, what was your sort of musical inspiration growing up? Uh, I was a 60s and 70s child, <laughs> the 70s, high school and um, middle school and 60s. Of course, I was three or four years old. And that. But um, I think uh, I could say my biggest influence was the Motown sound, which okay. still to this day, artists from, to me are so legendary. I always flatter when people call me legend. I'm like, well, no, a legend's like Stevie Wonder, <laughs> Betty Robinson, or Diana Ross. And those are the people that I grew up uh, listening to and influenced my music. Um, and of course, dance music, they call it disco and dance, but um, in the 70s. And then that's when I think our record became global but we had other hits um way before we we're family project yeah it and globally so um so i would say the influence is really all through the 60s and 70s motown and 70s all kinds of artists um i'm a huge huge fan of stevie wonders <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I think we're living in the day and age of a mozart and a beethoven and a Brahms and and I was Stevie Wonder, Stevie, you know, I was to me genius. And yeah. I don't take that for granted. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you know, you said uh, growing up, um, and I and I guess it's interesting for us, uh, you know, growing up in, in those, you know, 60s and into, into the 70s, um, we hear stories about the Jackson 5 and how they sort of, uh, maybe like the Temptations and, and the Supremes were more, an older generation sort of identified that and then the Jacks Five kind of became the global sensation. For yourself, you said you were still more the Supremes and Stevie more so than the Jackson Five? Well, of course the Jackson Five too. I just didn't mean to leave them out. <laughs> <laughs> They're a cornerstone of all of us growing up. I, I'm very much, I uh, was very much the same age as Michael. And so I... And then when the sisters, when we toured, we did get a chance to tour with the brothers. Eventually. Are you serious? Yeah, we'll talk about that. But okay, yeah. We got a chance to to share the stage with Jacksons and Michael and his brothers. And, and it was a growing, I mean, I think we all are still growing in a growing stage of our lives, no matter what. When we yeah. stop growing, when we stop. But yeah. at that period, it was definitely a growing period for me, musically. And um, my artistry, I got a chance to, the huge blessing for me was to be able to protege with a lot of huge stars uh, in that era, like the Spinners or the, you know, work with the Jacksons or, oh my gosh, everybody really in all different kinds and genres of music. And I got a chance to learn firsthand and experience what it was like to, to evolve as an artist. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm a massive Michael fan, and, and hearing his story about how being put in a spotlight at sort of young age sort of took away childhood, and he couldn't have the normal life. For yourself, being the youngest of your sisters and having to be, you know, sort of in a group, how much did that impact on your sort of childhood and and what you probably might have enjoyed doing? 
Um, a huge impact. I mean, there were lots of sacrifices. We couldn't have normalcy, like, you know, after school activities. No, you know, wow. we got to be always in the same town, even when um, we did go to higher education, university, it always had to be in the same town we lived in. I didn't get a chance to experience it. Well, HBCU situate, uh, or experience or going away to college period, but I did of course, go to Temple University here in, in Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. We all did. But I think that the sacrifices in the younger days was more not being able to go um, to be involved with school activities, to, to, you know, you did cut out a huge amount of your social life. I, th I feel like now, in retrospect, I, I married very young, like at 20, you know, and, um, but I, because I really felt like I had seen the world. <laughs> you know? But um, I think more than anything, the biggest sacrifice, honestly, mm -hmm. is is that you do have to have a dual life. I did. I know I always, you know, I reverence myself to a real life Hannah Montana because oh. I don't know if you guys have that. that yeah, um, the yeah. Miley Cyrus, right? Yes. Yeah. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, it's like somebody saw me, like, I actually would do these huge superstar concerts overseas at the age of 13 in your country, in England. We had a hit record called Mama Never Told Me. And mm -hmm. that record had gone to number one there, or your top 10. And I was 13 years old and I would travel wow. overseas and I did these massive concerts. And then I'd come home and I'd get on the bus and I'd go to school. Wow. I, never talked, I never talked about it really. I was your friends, you know. What you, in middle school, like, what did you do this weekend? I went to the mall. I went to the movie. <laughs> I went to I went to London. <laughs> I had a huge concert with my sisters. I just eventually it just came off like I was bragging or, uh. or lying. <laughs> <laughs> Get these looks like, yeah, right, you really went to London. And so what I learned early was, you know, I started saying I had to work, and that seemed to work. And I'd go, oh, I had to work. Okay. And that was okay. And what it did for me is it gave me a balance that, yes, this is your work and this is your life and your life comes first. So it gave me an immeasurable balance of how to really navigate this whole show business thing, if you want to call it that, um, that your life has to come first. And don't ever really get too overboard with with the spotlight part of it, it's a part of it. It's concomitant to having a career that you're going to be recognized and you're going to be in the spotlight and blah, blah, blah. But you got to, when you come down off of that, yeah. come off. Wow. I mean, was it fun though as, as a young, because I, I, I think most of us would think as kids, like, oh, I love to be on TV and I love to do this. Um, but it's a very different thing when you're living in a in what I would assume a controlled bubble, having to be, people telling you what to do, where to go, and stuff. But when you reflect back, was it fun or did you did, did was it hard? And I think you know, I literally I literally grew up on stage. I mean, really, some people come up to me and they go, oh, "I grew up listening to you," and I was like, "I was kind of growing up too," you know. <laughs> While you were growing up, I was growing up. Said so I was singing. Um, but no, I get that a lot. And, and, um, I remember meeting Madonna once and she said, I grew up listening to you. And I was like, I'm a little bit younger than you, <laughs> but I laughed and I said, you know, honestly, everybody did, everybody has, and that's a huge compliment. But I think, um, yeah, it was hard work, but you have to love it. And that's the advice that I give with anything that we do. Yeah. We love what we do. It's not really work, but it is hard work. And um, my work ethics, I've been told, I have very strong work ethics. Growing up, I knew what we had to do and what I had to do in order to um, be able to perform. You know, first and foremost, it was make sure that all of our, our curriculum and our grades in school stayed at a very good place. And our mother used to tell us, if, if that starts faltering, if you have a you know, if you start falling back with with, with your studies, then you can't do this. Wow. And we wanted to, 
Whoops, that's my dog right there. <laughs> Sorry. That's right. That's Gilly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all used to animals now. Yeah, that's it's right. part of it. So it's yeah. like you have to have a dog or a cat or something. <laughs> yeah. All goldfish or the fish. <laughs> well, hold on, Gilligan, stop. Sorry. It's fine. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the Half Time Chat community. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, but most importantly, why don't you consider being a member as a way of supporting the channel, but also getting a lot of videos ahead of time, a lot of behind the scenes stuff, and some exclusive content that doesn't get shared. But anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for being part of Halftime Chat. Sweet.